emulation in the retro gaming sphere can be a bit of a sticky subject. Some of us can't stand it, some of us love it, and some of us like myself, and I think the vast majority feel it has a very important place in the retro gaming uh, community. Personally, I really do prefer the real hardware when it comes to actually playing and experience the games, but I can understand that lots of people can't get access to the hardware. Uh, they are, you know, the hardware is quite alien to them. They've never used it if they want to use it to, for the first time, if they want to experience some of the games and some of the versions of the classic games that they would have played on the Spectrum or the Commodore or the Amiga or whatever. If you've never grown up with these systems, emulation is the best way to experience these games without having to go the whole hog with all the hardware and learning all the ins and outs of these particular systems. Personally, I feel it's very important to the gaming community and it's something that should be treasured and it's great that it archives these annals of gaming uh, history and all the massive, massive library that we go, you know, going back into the 70s you can experience this. It's quite amazing in the modern day that we can do this, uh, obviously, because this wasn't available to us 20 years ago or so. So, but it is now. The Amstrad in particular is uh, one machine that a lot of people didn't really grow up with, um, but they would want to experience the games. And I can understand why you would want to do that via emulation. It's the easiest, most accessible way to do it. So in this video, I'm gonna highlight two emulators that I particularly use and show you basically how to get playing games on them. It's quite straightforward, it's not that complicated if you're good with your PC. Uh, it's very easy in fact, and as, you know, if you've been using other emulators such as Spec Spectaculator for the, for the Spectrum and WinUAE for the uh, Amiga, you'll find this quite straightforward to follow. Uh, like I say, if you're new to the Amstrad and you want to experience some Amstrad games via emulation, then uh, yeah, here's some tips for you. The first thing you'll need is resources. Now, you need the ROM files to play the games themselves. Personally, I always choose this website here, CPC Power. It's kind of like the Mecca Bible for uh, Amstrad CPC users. It has everything you could possibly want to know about the Amstrad information-wise. It has a huge, huge database of games all the modern ones as well get uploaded to it very, very, very quickly when they're released as well. There's hundreds and thousands, well maybe not hundreds of thousands, but th certainly thousands of game ROMs on this and you can download them via tape, via disc, a cracked version. There's so many things you, you can get from this website, all free as well. So I would recommend that you visit this website to get your games that you want. You need your DSK files for your disc games, you need your CDT files for your tape games, and you need CPR files for any cartridge games that you wish to play on an Amstrad platform. There are alternative sites that you can visit as well. You have CPC Rules. It's a little bit more complicated to navigate, but it is an interesting site and certainly has got some good articles on it. And finally, there is CPC Game Reviews, which is an excellent, very basic, but excellent site by Nicholas Campbell, a good friend of mine. And uh, he has also had the zip files for the games as well on the reviews. They're attached to the reviews themselves. So highlight the, uh, the title of each game review and you'll download the game as well. Uh, obviously ready to play on an appropriate emulator. So let's get into the emulators. So the emulators that I choose myself are WinApe is the first one. WinApe is generally considered one of the most popular, one of the most widespread PC emulators, uh, PC based emulators for the Amstrad CBC. It's free to get. Unfortunately, it's not currently being updated, so it is a bit uh, out of date, I guess, when it comes to any bugs that have been discovered in the recent years. But generally, it's very stable, quite accurate, uh, probably, you know, I'd, I'd say very accurate, in fact, in a lot of ways. The sound isn't massively accurate, but it's still close enough for us to experience the game. And it's very easy to use and very easy to set up. Another emulator that I really, really enjoy is Retro Virtual Machine. Retro Virtual Machine is also free to get. Uh, this also emulates the Spectrum as well and a variety of different machines. Unlike WinApe, it um, cannot emulate the Plus machines or the GX4000. It doesn't have that ability as of yet. So if you do wish to play cartridge games or the Plus games from the Amstrad range, then the Retro Virtual Machine doesn't let you do that. But it's great, greatly, brilliantly designed, brilliantly pre presented. It's a really good emulator and it's really accurate as well. And the final emulator that I won't show you 
in detail on this video but is one that I do favor a lot which is Java CPC and now this will need the Java runtime environment um, software loaded onto your PC to run but it's very good it's got a high degree of uh, emulation it's got a lot of settings to use as well there's lots of uh, intuitive things to do with it uh, but if you just basically want to play games you can do that as well and uh, again it's just as straightforward as uh, WinApe for me uh, I personally find it a very good backup but the two emulators we are going to look at are WinApe and Retro Virtual Machine and we'll start with WinApe Okay, so the first Amstrad emulator we're going to talk about is Win8. Now, this is my go-to emulator for the Amstrad on the PC. I use this considerably for the channel. It's my primary emulator, and a lot of people do use Win8 as well as the primary emulator, namely because it's very easy to use. And we're just going to go through some of the basics of it to get you playing games. So as you can see on the top here, we've got File Settings, Debug, Assembler, and Help. Really, yeah, if you just want to be playing games, the only two things you want to be concerned about are the first two. On the bottom, you've also got shortcut uh, controls. Now, these essentially are uh, quick links to st some of the stuff that's hidden in the menu. So you can turn this bar off. Generally, I do because it improves the game playing experience for me. But it also shows the speed that the um, processor of the Amstrad emulator is running and the current frames per second as well. But the first thing you want to do when you install WinApe, uh, it, you can actually just execute it from an exe file, is go into its settings, and one of these, general display, it all goes to the same window, which is this window here. So in the first general tab, you've got what kind of system you want to be emulating. Generally, I will always pick a CPC 6128 or 6128 with Parados, which is the extended um, operating DOS system for the Amstrad but if you want to play tape games obviously you've got the 464 the 464 with Parados and you've got the entire plus range so you can play GX4000 games on your 6128 plus again with the updated DOS language personally I like to go a bit more traditional but with the extended memory so that's why I choose the 6128 uh, second option is the display option now here we've got many different displays you can you can do a bit of parallel emulation you can soften the edges or the display uh, there's an on-screen LED so it shows you the activity half size display tiny tiny display you don't really want to mess with that you can actually mess with the, the size of the window anyway uh, to get your perfect size personally there is a snap size that I use which is kind of like half about a third of the two-thirds of the size of this window uh, I've blown this one up just to show you exactly what's going on and you can hide the mouse mice pointer if you want. You can go full screen. All the options are there. You can turn it to green screen if you fancy, or you can turn it to grayscale if you fancy. I prefer to keep it in the glorious color of the Amstrad. The sound options, obviously you can use the PC speaker or, or direct sound. I just switch on direct sound for that. Or you can turn it off completely. Emulation or other sounds, such as the tape loading sounds and the disk drive sounds. I keep on for a little bit of authenticity. And the memory options as well. Uh, obviously, with a 6128, it will default at 128K. Uh, generally, I'll keep it there. Well, you can extend it if you've got uh, other programs that require the extension of the memory, such as homebrew stuff and demos. And then you've got your all-important keyboard layout. And this is where you can redefine the keys of the CPC in accordance to the PC computer. It's quite simple and used, easy to use. So if you want you to select Q, you want a Q to do another action you can do this drop down menu and this drop down menu will give Q a different action to perform in it good for sort of like setting up uh, things like uh, the fire buttons three fire buttons oddly but there's really only two that are enabled mostly on most Amstrads particularly one and you can sort of set any key on the keyboard to perform as fire alternatively a joystick Win8 will automatically detect a USB joystick uh, generally but you remember how you have to enable that with this little checkbox down here then you should be set up now if you do want to do further stuff when it comes to redefining keys and, and joysticks and stuff what you can do is get uh, joy to key which is a free to uh, grab so piece of software which will run in the background and when you run joy to key uh, basically you, that in that program you'll be able to assign key 
keystrokes to specific actions on the joystick. It's very easy to use. I'm not going to go into it here. Uh, I'm going to leave. I'll leave the link in the description box for the Joy to Key program. Like I say, it's very easy to use. So once you're finished and happy with everything, don't mess around with these either. Uh, just other different displays you can use different settings to uh, do different things. Again though, you want it basically a set up really simply. Color on, sound on, a 6128 or a 464. 6128 is probably the easiest to use. And off you go, so just press OK for that. Now to load a game, it's quite straightforward. You have to have your ROMs of course, you can get these from uh, CPC Power, CPC Game Reviews, uh, Forever CPC. There's so many different sites that you can get the ROMs from. Personally, CPC Power is my go-to site. I will always go to CPC Power for that. It has a great selection of ROMs, almost all of them. Uh, it's got all the art packages, the history of the games, uh, the cover scans, the lot. It's a absolute must for Amstrad users is CPC Power. So use that website. Again, link in the description box. So if you want to load a game, quite straightforward. We go to file and we go to drive A and insert disk image. So this will be loading DSK images, which are here now. I've got some test ones lined up. Robocop, Operation Wolf, Navy moves an Arkanoid. And this bottom button at the bottom here, automatically run program. If you tick that, all oh, literally all you have to do is click that, press OK, open, and the emulator will do everything itself. You don't have to do any keystroke commands or nothing. The game will just straight off the bat load as you can see and uh, this is obviously the crack so uh, we don't want any of this kind of stuff but we should load up everything's good and you can see there's a, a nice bit of sound there playing lovely music of Operation Wolf very straightforward stuff and away you go and everything should work straight off the bat if there is any problems like I said you can redefine the keys in the display it, it, sorry in the input options there pauses the emulator by the way when you go into the menus uh, or you can use joystick key to sort that out it's quite straightforward it, it, it's i have not found half as many problems that you get with other emulators that you do with the amstrad emulator especially win8 it's so simple so straightforward everything seems to work straight off the bat it's very unlikely it won't um there's not much of this pick Picking around with controller mapping and stuff like that. A lot, a lot of that you've got to do with, for instance, Spectacular and, um, and a lot of some of the SNES emulators uh, and, and the Commodore 64 emulator, of course, uh, things like that. Uh, just yeah, that you've got to mess around with. But you really don't have to do that with Win8. It's just quite straightforward. Uh, again, if you want to go back to the uh, home screen, just go, go back to the boot screen, just hit, hit reset, and off you go. You're back. Straightforward. So loading that will load all your discs. Obviously you've got disk images here, flip disk, edit disk, remove disk, all that kind of stuff. If Whenever you um, put a disk in, it will remember that that disk is there even if you close the program. And the same goes for cartridges and the same goes for tapes. Now in tapes, again, you can, uh, what you'll have to do is either command the 61282 switch to tape version, which would go bar tape, uh, RSX, RSX command tape, or it's just easier obviously to switch the model that you're using so you would switch it to CPC 464 it boots up as the 464 if you press one of the control keys and the numeric keypad enter then you'll get the traditional line which you would normally do on a real CPC control and small enter it works exactly the same as it does on a PC keyboard uh, one of the controls only works it though then you can use your tape control so you go to show tape control which is a tiny little thing down here you can get that bigger. And I've got ice slider loaded in that to the moment, but what I tell you, I'll load something else. Uh, for instance, so what CDTs? Do, I don't have many CDTs. Uh, CDT files, incidentally, are the tape image files. Same as TZX on the Spectrum. Uh, that were extremely similar. Uh, I don't have a lot, to be honest, uh, when it comes to CDTs. Uh, I use them for restoring things. But when it comes to this, so I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll stick with Ice Slider. So it's currently paused, so switch back to the emulator, press any key, and go back to the tape control, and press play. And now hopefully, uh, you switch back to the emulator, it should start loading. When you luck. There it goes. There it goes. 
ice slider is loading and then you've got to obviously wait for the emulator to uh, do its thing you can uh, speed things up by going into warp mode high speed which is there if you wish uh, and sometimes what's happened and, and, and this is a good example that this has happened actually because you can interrupt the loading whenever you fancy I've just noticed that the sound has obviously gone a bit uh, quiet so uh, no, that seems to be fine so you can warp that just by high speed everything will load really quickly as you can see the turbo data there zipping through so you can hear the loading sounds and there you go so once it's go back to normal speed and you've got uh, a game loaded up uh, via CDT via tape simple as that and again another th important thing to remember another important thing to remember when loading from tape is that this will remember again remember that you've got this tape loaded in the tape deck so sometimes it's good to sort of reject it before you close the program because if you do move this file anywhere you'll get an error message every time you reopen uh, WinAim and they'll say you can't find the file so the best thing to do is just eject it close and uh, off you go from there we reset now we'll just show you the quick the quickly the cartridge which again is straightforward so you switch your type we want to go to a 6128 plus press OK sometimes that will happen so give it a cold reset there we go and then what you're looking for now are load cartridge uh, load cartridge and of course I've got I've got cartridge files already and set up in my carts file let's go back there here we go uh, so these are all different versions uh, of uh, all the cartridges that you could get for the GX4000 uh, many home brews and stuff like that uh, but we'll you know we'll keep it basic and we'll go with something like uh, burning rubber if I can find it it's at the top there it is so these are CPR files cartridge files on the Amstrad are CPR files uh, again everything is set up for this because it's an instant loading thing so select the file press open and burning rubber loads instantly so it's that, that straightforward it's really easy to use um, it's my go-to emulator it's not fallible infallible um, it's got problems it has emulation issues with some games uh, its sound is not is not 100% accurate no emulator is 100% accurate of course to the hardware but it's very very close some games I find uh, do glitch out on it but there's not many and this is why I use three different emulators in case that uh, Win8 fails for some reason to uh, emulate successfully and emulate satisfactorily I've got uh, Retro Virtual Machine and Java CPC to use and now I'll sh quickly show you Retro, Retro Virtual Machine uh, as my second choice of Amstrad emulation okay so here is the other Amstrad emulator I like to use Retro Virtual Machine now the interface for this is brilliant it's really lovely it's excellently presented it's, um, it's a lot more intuitive than Winamp Winape Winamp I don't know what Winamp is Winamp is an old uh, music player program isn't it Winape sorry um, but uh, it does come with its uh, issues because of that it's a lot more difficult to capture uh, raw footage because of the way the emulation works uh, the way the display of the emulation should I say works but it is very intuitive and it's got a lot going for it its emulation is extremely accurate as well and some of the scrolling it can do is actually smoother than WinApe so uh, that's great you, when you first um, in, open this up and install the retro virtual machine this will all be blank there'll be nothing here and like, as you can see it can also emulate the spectrum as well which is excellent this is the Am Amstrad and Win spectrum essentially so you what you would do would go is go to create machine and it gives you the option to create one of the machines from the Amstrad range or the spectrum range absolutely wonderful really good stuff we created our machine so I'm not going to do that then you've got open machine configure gamepad now configure gamepad you do that straight off the bat you can hit that button and it's a very in just very simple this kind of stuff hit the buttons in the corresponding order just to come just to configure your gamepad again it self-detects USB devices very easy so 
that is really much to say about the intro menu so hit the machine that you want to play and it will just go straight into it like that close the hamburger menu so this is what you greeted with obviously the Amstrad boot screen the blue screen and then all the controls are on this top edge here the ones that sort of like slide away hidden yeah you've got your display options here so you can change the output display what kind of color green screen monochrome there we go different color adjustments so a lot more adjusting uh, facilities on this than Win Winamp you can put the scan lines on if you fancy of course happens in real time that's nice interlaced mask noise all that kind of stuff you see have it, have it a little bit messy like that if you fancy i don't i like it clean any ghosting you want to get rid of you know improve the sharpness many many display options this this is just the refresh reset button you don't really want to worry about that it's a very simple simple thing these are the sound options again look at this interface it's a lovely interface again the three channels of the ay you can mess around with the tape volume control low pass filter of course and the overall output excellent stuff it's really easy to see and easy to work with close that this goes into the actual keyboard itself if you want to sort of like mess around with assemblers and stuff like that but what we really want to do is look at the games don't we so um again close that and the games are up here so you've got the cut the cassettes obviously and you've got the disc and let's switch to disc and it gives you this lovely sort of front profile image of the 6128 with its disc drive and of course it's secondary disc drive and all these effects there ads are really good load a game it's quite straightforward hit uh, the uh, eject button <laughs> like it would be on the real uh, CPC and insert disc and then just choose a disc from the same library that we you would use from uh, Winamp Winamp I keep saying that Winape uh, or any any anyway we'll go for Arkanoid Revenge of Doe because it's right there press open loads it into them that looking lovely with a bit of sound effects as well it won't automatically load the program though however so you will need a bit of Amstrad basic knowledge so just to type in cat get the file name that we need to sort of load and then run uh, speech marks disk and then that will load hopefully Arkanoi Revenge of Doe pretty rapidly as well there we go and you've got the little disk sounds there as well And there we go, uh, we have got uh, Arkanoid Revenger Doe ready to play. Simple as that, again, when you hover the mouse, the controls will appear at the top. You've got the volume channels obviously popping around at the top. But to obviously hover the mouse off, and then you'll be able to sort of like see the whole thing. That's why it's, this is a little bit uh, tricky to capture. You get, you can get this as a capture window on its own because obviously I'm capturing the full monitor at the moment. But you can get this as a capture window on its own. Every time you sort of move the mouse over, the, the menu drops down. I haven't found a way to get rid of that. Um, so it is a bit awkward to capture. But to play, it's probably better than WinApe uh, as standalone. But it's just sometimes a little bit tricky to sort of get your head around. Sometimes I think it's actually very, very well presented and brilliantly, brilliantly done. <coughs> And also, there's still support for virtual, retro virtual machine. It's an ongoing project, I believe. So hit that to reset, and that's it. Really, it's so simple. You don't need to uh, obviously with Winamp, Winape. <laughs> what is wrong with me? Winape. Um, it will automatically load the games for you. It won't do that in uh, retro virtual machine. You have to do it yourself. Uh, but you know that's not hard. That's not hard at all cancel that for instance you can put a second disc in there if you fancy or you can use tape control uh, which will be like that which displays like that of course uh, because it would be it's brilliant because of course with a 6128 you would have a, an external tape deck wouldn't you you see that's quite clever if you switch to say for instance we switch to um, so we pick the main window say for instance we switch to the 464 which is popped out there Oh, it's going mental there. Let's reset that. There we go. I've got the settings on differently for the 464, as you can see. But if you go to tape control, look, you've got the tape control of the uh, 464, which I think is brilliantly done. I think this is wonderfully presented. It's so, it's so clever. I really like that. But let's close that anyway. We've still got that running in the background. So that's the 6128. And again, it's the one you want to go to. So quickly, I'll show you again. Disk. 
with with the screen sort of changing size all the time as well minimizing pushing to the side all that again tricky to capture because the window size changes that is why it's awkward to capture so so eject the physical disk you want insert another disk we'll go for buggy boy buggy boy insert and then we just type in cat oh and we don't put the bracket uh, to find what we need to load oh it's taken a while oh no no oh, hello what's happened here you see ah, have i just have i discovered a might be a dodgy rom probably a dodgy rom so we'll cancel that we'll try another one uh, eject let's go for something else then um, barbarian, barbarian's always good. So we'll try barbarian. We'll reset the machine. You will get occasionally things like this happen. A lot of the time, it's just the ROM that's giving the problem. So run bar b r n one <laughs> e barbarian one. Yeah, so we go one player, the throne room. CNG software uh, sort of crack and there we go and Barbarian is uh, loaded for you it's, just, it's, it's, it's very straightforward don't be afraid of Amstrad emulation really don't um, it's like I said there are loads of emulators out there that you can use you can choose you can mess around with but personally the ones that I do go for are WinApe and of course retro virtual machine and there's a third i go for as well which is java cpc which is my sort of like uh, third choice to use if uh, i can't get on with the first two choices or, or rom doesn't work or I, I discover a problem capturing or something java cpc it developed by uh, marcus homan it's actually very very good in in fact it, it uses the uh, java um environment engine the java runtime environment engine and uh, it's very good emulation it's pretty accurate uh, as far as I've found it's got a very similar interface to uh, WinApe um, I'm not going to go on about it I'm not going to show you it uh, because I think these two will get you on, on the road to Amstrad emulation uh, one of these two is more than enough uh, to do what you need to do uh, retro virtual machine like I say is excellent if you just want to emulate and play and you don't particularly want to capture it's excellent for that kind of stuff if you want to do a bit of everything can sort of like po poke into the assembly language database uh winape is probably better for that kind of stuff uh like i said but unfortunately winape is not being a little caveat to that should i say that winape is not actually being supported at the moment there's no de there's a sort of a development halt on it so any bugs that do exist in it won't be fixed anytime soon which is a damn shame hopefully the project will pick up Retro Virtual Machine is still being developed for. And like I said, you can choose other emulators. There's Arnold and Caprice. Uh, there's a list like I showed at, the, showed at the beginning of the video. There was a list I showed you. Uh, CPCE, which runs on DOS, unbelievably enough. Uh, there's online um, emulators you can use as well. Uh, as uh, you know, there's, there's many, many options. Uh, mobile options, I haven't found that many decent ones. The, em the emulators are okay themselves, but I think the controls are just horrible. And it, just, it doesn't feel right playing uh, an Amstrad or a Spectrum, for that matter, on a mobile or, or a laptop. Or, not a laptop, sorry, uh, a tablet. It doesn't feel right for me. But anyway, hopefully that will uh, get you on the road to uh, playing a bit of Amstrad on your PC via emulation. Hope you found this informative. If you have any questions for me, just give us a shout uh, on my Discord. I'll leave the link in the description box. And uh, we'll chat about Amstrad emulators. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you all soon. Novabug out. Hey, Novabug here. I do hope you enjoyed this video. Please support the channel by liking and commenting. And of course subscribing if you haven't already done. If you would like to support me further, please consider joining my bug army via Patreon. And also don't forget to follow me over at Facebook, Twitter, BitChute and Twitch. And finally, a very special mention to my Bug Army Generals, Sam M, Sweet Nanak, and Pete Walker. Thank you everyone for supporting me. Nova Bug, out.